Hey there everyone. So today what we're going to be talking about is what to pack when you're day hiking a 14er. So if you happen to stumble upon this video and you're like, I have no idea what a 14er is, uh, imagine it just being day hiking a mountain that's 14,000 feet or above. Um, this actually can go for all mountains as well, um, as long as you're day hiking it and it's in a fairly stable weather system. So um, to start out, um, I go with a pack, usually somewhere no more than 30 liters um, if I'm day, day hiking it. And the reason for that is because you don't need more than 30 liters. Um, 30 liters is actually too much stuff. Uh, usually this is as full as this thing gets. So when you're really looking at that, like I've only filled half the pack. Now, what are some of the kind of smaller things like food, water, snacks? For myself, I bring um, one small Nalgene, or just normal Nalgene size bottle, so 32 ounces. And then I bring a large one, so 48. And then I bring a little baby one. The baby one, for me, I start out with uh, having coffee in, it in the morning, and then I walk and drink my coffee. And then after that, uh, once it's gone, I either refill it in a stream, if there's a stream, or I just take from the big one, dump it in there, and then put electrolytes. With both of these two, uh, it's just water. Uh, I don't like to have other things. Um, I like just having some with just water so I can choose when to and when not to have like electrolytes or flavors. And so that's what this baby bottle's for. Uh, food wise, I don't have food set up in here, but I usually bring a bag of snacks as in like trail mix, um, maybe some like corn nuts or something, definitely some jerky, some probably like dried mango, something of that sort. And I just put that all in a single Ziploc bag, like your typical sandwich bag. Then I bring a sandwich, um, sometimes two. If it's gonna be like a long day, I'll bring two. But for the most part, it's just one sandwich. Uh, this kind of ebbs and flows. Uh, I used to really love like a ham and cheese sandwich. And then lately I've been on a, been on a peanut butter and jelly kick. But uh, I will say the peanut butter and jelly doesn't last as long. You like eat it and it's gone pretty quick. So. Ham and cheese is definitely better if you're looking for a very long day. Then I usually do like a, a Builder Bar by Cliff Bar. They're, they're like the little bit meatier ones um, and they have like 20 grams of protein. So um, I really look to have a little bit more su sustenance as I'm going because I dislike the feeling of feeling really hungry when I'm out there. Uh, it distracts me from everything else that's there. And that's honestly it for snacks. Um, some people bring more, some people bring less. Uh, you'll learn that as, as you go for yourself. Um, shoes, if you're day hiking, this is really up to you. <clears throat> I'm kind of intermittent. So I like having boots, but I have found that boots are heavy and um, they last longer, but also there's sometimes a, a pain in the butt because they're so heavy and, and cumbersome. Um, also, like boots like this, um, they don't have much flex at all. Um, there's like a wood plank. Actually, I think this one's carbon fiber, but yeah. And so it's literally just like walking on a plank of wood all the time. So my feet get pretty sore. Um, so if I'm going slow, I know that I'll wear boots, um, but if I'm trying to go faster, there's a few different hacks here. Approach shoes are great. Um, I used to only climb in. I used to only climb in approach shoes, and the reason for that is approach shoes are just super. They're not only comfortable; they have sticky rubber, so when you're going over talus or if you have to do like fourth or fifth class moves, it, it's like you don't. They're just easy to use. Um, the other option. The last kind of option is trail runners. Personally, 
I've found I don't enjoy trail runners. And the reason for that is uh, my feet always hurt the next day, like really bad. Uh, and that's just because there's like trail runners are so bendy that it really hurts for, for myself. Um, but if I were to actually trail run one of these, uh, I would wear trail runners. And the reason for that is because then I, I wouldn't be bringing all of this gear. I'd go super light. I would just do like an ultra light vest and have a little bit of water and a couple snacks. But since this is like day hiking and I know that the, um, and then I usually carry trekking poles. Uh, as you can tell, one of these is actually crooked. <laughs> Uh, I need to send it in, but I've just been out and about so much that I haven't been able to get that done. Uh, some people are super gear nerds and they'll be like, oh, why do you have snow mounts? Uh, to be honest, these just change um, as you go. Sometimes I don't have the snow mounts, but most of the time I do. And that's just because I'm too lazy to switch back and forth from when I am on snow and then when I'm not. Um, so yeah. And then um, one like, hiking hack to do is if you prone to blisters or anything put some duct tape around your hiking pole and it's just really helpful to like if you ever get a blister then you can just pull a little bit off and then duct tape rips pretty easily then rip it slap it on your your hot spot and then you're pretty much set to go inside of this pack i have a few safety things um I just upgraded to the Garmin Mini 2. It's, it's lighter. <laughs> I used to have the old one um, before Garmin bought DeLorme um, and that thing was a brick and it was kind of annoying. But uh, yeah, it's always helpful to have these. Uh, thankfully, I've never pressed SOS. To be honest, I don't really know what happens if you press SOS besides rescues could take like three to five days to get you. Um, so. Well, yes, it's like a safety measure. It's not like you press the button and a helicopter's coming in 20 minutes. So just know like safety wise, these are helpful. Um, some next safety items, sunglasses. Uh, always have sunglasses. It gets super bright out there. If you're crossing a talus field, what if it's like white granite and it's reflecting, it really hurts your eyes. Um, or if you're crossing a snow field, uh, snow blindness is a thing. If you're on a 14er, snow blindness is probably pretty unlikely unless you're doing it in the winter. But, you know, maybe, yeah. Long story short, have a pair of sunglasses. I always bring a little toilet setup. Ethics of where you poop on a 14er vary drastically everywhere you go. But um, some people, like some mountains require blue bags. Some are like blue bags are the best ethic. Um, and then others are like, just kind of be respectful of where you poop and like dig a hole, etc. cetera. Um, blue bag is just like a term because they used to actually come in like little blue bags. You can make them yourself. All it is is like two Ziploc bags and a little bit of toilet paper. Uh, having some hand sanitizer is also really nice to have. Next little hack, I always bring a little bit of Ricola, essentially just like hard candy. Ricola I've found helps with my lung and throat because it is a lozenger of some kind. So yeah, you can, you can use these. Um, Jolly Ranchers work great. It's just like something to suck on and like a little bit of sweet. It's always kind of nice. Headlamp, make sure your headlamp is charged or that you have spare batteries. Uh, there's nothing worse than dark falling upon you and then you are navigating by your phone light until that dies and then you're just literally wondering hopefully it's the moon is bright enough if you're if you're like me you'll have a camera my camera is currently recording this um, but also a gopro works great um, if you have a gopro i suggest bringing a couple extra batteries just because gopro batteries don't last for super long the fork spoon is a reminder for me uh, i like to occasionally have tuna like a not necessarily a can of tuna, but the pouch of tuna. And so I just like to eat it with a spoon. Um, you get these like little plastic ones. They're super light. I think they cost like a dollar. So uh, yeah, suggest these. They're great. And that's almost it uh, in terms of 
like safety gear, I bring a phone um, and then small first aid pouch. Um, small first aid pouches are great. The reality is like, that's really just like helpful for blisters. And if you get a scratch, if you're like getting messed up, one, it really shouldn't happen. But if it does happen, like, yeah, you're in the mountains. Like you have to like really have like wilderness first aid, uh, things of that sort to properly take care of it. Next up is layers. So for me, I love to hike in shorts, but the reality is most 14ers, once you get towards the top, it's like really windy and cold. So I wear pants. Um, I just wear a single pair of socks and yeah, I usually have a puffy jacket of some kind stuffed in here. I'll wear a sun hoodie and then kind of build up from there. But um, yeah, so I always have a rain jacket. Rain jackets are helpful if it's just windy out. Uh, it also keeps your heat in. Uh, and then obviously if it rains, a rain jacket is great for rain. Next up inside of here, rain pants. Rain pants are great. Uh, if you're a person that loves to hike in shorts, one of the hacks I've, I've used from time to time is you have your short, like you're wearing your shorts and if it's too cold, you use these as like a wind layer and a heat layer. Um, that only works if it's not really cold uh, and if you essentially never stop. If you stop and you just have these, uh, your heat evaporates super quick and that's always a little bit hard. Um, also great for rain. The last thing that I will say, if you are walking like bushwhacking or it's like there's a grassy field or just like low shrubbery and it's like early in the morning so it's dewy, put on a pair of rain pants, otherwise you're gonna be soaking wet and that so like that's gonna soak into your socks and into your boots. And then that's that's honestly one of the worst things ever. So suggest the, the rain pants. Next little bit is so like I said, I go a sun hoodie underneath. Uh, also just like a t-shirt works too. I like the sun hoodie because you can put the hood on. Um, and then next I do a fleece layer. Uh, and the fleece layer is great because they're flexible. You can sweat through them. Like the sweat will like pass. It also like allows for ventilation. You won't get too hot, which is really nice. And then, you know, like I said, you got a puffy and that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I always bring a ball cap of some kind. Uh, I have a ton of them and I just, I love them. Uh, one thing I will say, try to get the five panel because the five panel doesn't have a button on top. So if you have to wear a helmet or something like that, um, it would, doesn't smash on your head. So like if you're doing like a fifth class route and you have a helmet, uh, definitely suggest a five panel hat. Cause yeah, if Rockfall comes down and hits you with the helmet and you have the button, that, can, that button can actually like crack your skull if it's hard enough. So definitely five panel hat. Um, and that's everything I got in here. Uh, I always wear a watch. Uh, wear whatever watch you want. I've been kind of into the, like the more techie watches that can track what I'm doing. Uh, I think it's just cool to see the data afterwards, but you don't even need it. Um, but it is helpful to have a watch so that you can monitor A, how long you're going for and B, what time it is as you're looking up at the sky and you're like, okay, cool. There's clouds coming in and then you can in your head take notes of like, okay, 20 minutes have passed and the clouds are dissipating. Two hours have passed and the clouds are getting thicker. Uh, and you can kind of start to see what the weather's doing and keep in mind of like how fast that weather might be moving in or not. So it's all super helpful. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching. Consider liking it and subscribing. It helps out the channel and makes it so I can make more videos like this. Thank you, I hope you have a good day.